survey for GMB and TES has revealed 80% of teachers think a lack of autism training has had a direct effect on their pupils' education. So from today, a training video made by campaigner Immy Swain will be shown to hundreds of teachers around the UK to help them spot the signs of autism. Immy and her dad, senior GMB correspondent Jonathan Swain, join us now. Welcome to you both. We've seen the video. We're going to see it in a couple of minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, Immy, it's brilliant. You do, it's a really, really good video. Um, now, just tell us, you were 15 when you had your diagnosis of being autistic. What, what did that mean to you? Well, I'd struggled my whole life with my mental health and being at school and just generally fitting in and managing day-to-day -day tasks. And I never really knew why. So getting the diagnosis meant that I was able to understand that this is why I struggle. And it then meant that the people around me were able to offer the help that I needed. And now I don't struggle as much as I used to. And Jonathan, this survey says that this huge majority of teachers feel that they don't have the skills to spot students like Immy. And therefore, I mean, completely understandably, students are suffering as a result because they're treated presumably as naughty kids uh, who aren't concentrating. Yeah, and I'm not surprised by the results of this survey at all. What 80% of the teachers feel they don't get the support they need. There's just not enough sort of training out there, Susanna, for them. And, and this isn't sort of... Um, you know, criticising teachers at all. This is something really positive. The video that Imi's done uh, just sort of helps teachers and it's a tool mm. in, their, in their army, in their toolkit, if you like, just to assist them. Because if you diagnose uh, children uh, with autism um, or spot them uh, in schools, then therefore it just makes the classroom experience not just better for the pupils, but for the teacher and for the parents as well. That's the key One thing. One of the things in the video that, that, that really struck me yesterday, and as I said, it's a really good video, it really Thank communicates you. it really well, uh, is, is when Imi says um, that when, when at times she was simply not looking at the teacher or her work, but just looking away like that, that was interpreted um, that she'd lost concentration, but she mm. wasn't. She was thinking really hard, trying to process the information that was coming from the teacher's mouth. She wasn't not concentrating at all. It was the, the very opposite. But the teacher misread it. Well, Amy, you often were told off, weren't you, for not looking yeah. at the teacher directly or looking at the board. Will you explain? You were often told off for, for not were being deemed to not concentrate. Yeah, I was told... I, was, I would get told off by some teachers because, don't get me wrong, some teachers have been amazing and they've sort of understood mm. that that's just how we learn, but there have been other teachers who maybe needed a bit more understanding of autism and they would just... I would get shouted at for not concentrating when I was. Well, what's brilliant about uh, the film that you've made is that it is helpful uh, for teachers and therefore adopted uh, in, in order to show uh, classes what sort of experience you have and, and those who um, have autism. But also, I just found it a huge insight for mm. me mm. into the kind of behaviours that we're talking about. Mm. I thought I knew what it meant. Yeah. I had absolutely no idea, Imi, what you'd been going through. Um, and let's have a look at a clip from the video you made and see what teachers and pupils thought of it. Hi, I'm Imi. This video is about spotting undiagnosed autistic children. I think the film's really powerful. I think it's a really good way of actually educating young people and teachers about autism and how children with autism go through their daily life. When things got too much for me, I was often found hiding in the toilets or under the sink. The video gives you a good solid understanding of the multiple different signs and traits that an autistic child will have. It takes me longer to process things like bits of information being thrown at me in the classroom. Feeling overwhelmed in class and not being able to concentrate really like, resonated with me. Sometimes I would have what teachers would refer to as inappropriate outbursts of talking. A lot of them do resonate with me, like being overwhelmed by like talking and like staring at a wall or like a window to like distract yourself. The one that resonates with me the most is masking because I do it literally all the time. My diagnosis changed everything. I now get the help and support that I need. That's so interesting. Those pupils have been lucky enough to have a diagnosis and are just expressing there, Amy, just how much what you said resonated. One of the words used was masking. Mm -hmm. yeah. What does masking mean? So masking is typically done in girls, but can be done in boys as well. And it's when you adapt your behaviours to fit in with those around you. Mm -hmm. So... Uh -huh. If you're with a really loud group of people, you'll be really loud. And it's pretty much you're pretending that you're not autistic, even if you're not aware that you are autistic. Mm. You're suppressing all of your struggles or your feelings mm. and you're 
changing yourself to be like the people around you. And what was the trigger? You talk about hiding in the toilets, which makes me feel quite sad, really. What, what, what would be the trigger for you going and hiding in the toilet? Um, to be honest, it could be anything. And I think that not understanding meant that I obviously went through some horrible times, which meant people were quite horrible to me because there was no understanding for what I was going through. Um, so it could be anything. It could be someone maybe saying something or maybe it was too loud mm. or I was being given too much information. I just couldn't cope with what was going on. Mm. Jonathan, we talk about the, how important it is for teachers to understand. I feel as a parent it's really important to understand how pupils might be behaving. Mm. But was it an enormous relief for you? Did you know and just feel that Imi hadn't received the right diagnosis or did you have no idea? To be honest, we didn't really have any idea at all. Uh, and we knew that Amy was like, struggling at school. That yeah. was the big trigger point. How many know. schools had... Five schools. Yeah. Oh. And, and I know we you know, get contact with lots of parents, and lots of parents watching will have, you know, going through similar process situation as us if their you know, child's on the spectrum. You know, constantly you're talking to schools, uh, trying to manage Amy's day just to make her happy. You're not asking for anything special. You just want her to be, have a school to be a happy experience. And that's the same for most uh, autistic and people on, uh, children on the spectrum. So constantly you're emailing uh, the schools the whole time. And obviously they don't have... They didn't know that Amy was autistic, and neither uh, did we as well. Mm. So when it did come round at 15 uh, years old, the diagnosis, initially Amy didn't accept it for a year. It took her a year to accept it. She's like, I'm not autistic. They've got it wrong. Let's be retested again. Mm. Um, and then, but after that, you know, now we make adjust adjustments in our life. We know that Amy was autistic to go into a loud party, a loud room, the mm. food that she sort of eats, uh, you know, how you socialise with other families and friends. Mm. That all changes just to make Amy's... Uh, life, you know, a bit more calmer what, and not overwhelmed. What are the tests, Jonathan, for autism? Good. Uh, <laughs> how long have you got? Oh, okay. uh, it's a long, long process. We, we did a piece about it. Long. It gets. It takes a long time to get diagnosed, and, and that is part of the issue. How easy is it? To it's get not easy to get no. diagnosed. Uh, teachers didn't spot it. Doctors didn't spot it. Uh, you know, psychologists sort of uh, didn't uh, spot it at all. So, that, and because girls mask. And what Amy's talking about in this video, we're not diagnosing autism in this video at all. No. no. We're not. So I'm certainly not saying we're the experts on this. We're just saying this is one tool in Amy's experiences is to, you know, to point teachers, maybe that child that is struggling, is running away, is hiding in the, in the toilets, maybe there is something more going on. Yes. And we're just saying that's just a spark, a conversation, well, to, join up the dots. I have to tell you, once I'd finished seeing it, and it was embargoed until today, the, the video, but I wanted to send it straight away to a, a close relative of mine whose son has just been uh, diagnosed as being autistic, and I really want to send them the video. I'm going to be sending it later today, because <laughs> it'll be a huge help to them, it really will. Mm. Jonathan, how, how broadly is this going to be shared? Mm. Well, great. The uh, Autism Education Trust are a charity who are linked with the Department of Education and they do the main uh, training uh, for autism in the UK. Uh, so please go to the Autism Education It'll Trust. It'll be on their website. Yeah, and if you're a teacher and you want to watch it or, uh, you know, anyone in an educational establishment, go to the Autism uh, Education Trust uh, and they will make sure that that video is available to you. Look, it's only four or five minutes long. Yeah. You can boil the kettle in the staff room. Yeah. have the video playing, and suddenly you've got a few facts there. Not everything. Autism is very complex, but it just helps. And if it helps one person, Absolutely. you know... Absolutely. Jonathan, thank, thank you, you very much indeed. Great work. Emmy, brilliant film. Thank Great. you very much. Lovely to see you both.